Hi everyone, Aiden here with eTrailer.com. Today we're taking a look at the wall mount from Kurt here. It's gonna be a way to get your accessories off the ground and mount it up onto the wall here. We've got a variety of different ways we can mount up our accessories. We've got our cargo carrier kind of hanging down like this, and you can also put it in the front here depending on your setup. So this is great for cargo carriers, bike racks, ball mounts, really any hitch mounted accessory that you want off the ground. They're often really hard to store in your garage and they end up taking up more room than they need to. Having something like this is gonna help declutter your space and keep it nice and orderly. Let's check it out. So some things to keep in mind here. We've got a 350 pound capacity with this and it does need to be mounted into a wooden stud. So make sure you've got that solid place to mount it and the room. Clearly our cargo carrier is pretty wide here, but as you can see, we're not making contact with the wall because of how far it sticks out. From the wall to the center of that pin hole where we're actually attaching our hitch pin, it's gonna be four and a quarter inches. So you can go to the hitch pin hole on your accessory and measure down, and as long as you've got space, you can mount it up without any wall contact. I will say, depending on the accessory you plan on putting up here, it might be a little difficult to get it up or down on your own. Take this cargo carrier, for example. It's pretty heavy and pretty bulky, and it's got a threaded anti-rattle hitch pin. So I kind of have to put some upward pressure on the carrier while I'm loosening this up. Having an extra set of hands would really help because you want to make sure that you're being safe whenever you're loading and unloading this. But it is doable on your own. Once I get it most of the way out, I can just kind of readjust my grip, lower it down, and put it in the hitch of my vehicle. Rather than mounting your accessory vertically, you can also mount it horizontally. We can use either hitch pin hole for that. So I'll just go ahead and put our bike rack in place. Now this is one of our heaviest bike racks we have down in the shop here. So I figured this would be a good one to kind of test out the strength with. You can see, I'm gonna actually shoot for that innermost pin hole right there, just for the added security. And then once it's in this way, it'll actually support itself. So it's a lot easier to do on your own, so long as you can get the accessory up. Now the thing I really like about this method of mounting is that it frees up the space underneath for something like a toolbox. So it's gonna free up a lot of floor space in your garage too, keeping all this space functional while having our accessories up top. Now the only thing with this is you gotta think about how you're gonna be using the mount and where you want to mount it up. Obviously for something like this, you need to mount it up high enough. And if you've got a variety of different accessories, maybe you swap out your cargo carrier for your bike rack. And so the one that isn't in your hitch is in the garage. So you might need the flexibility of having one mounted vertically and one horizontally. It's really just up to how you're gonna be using it. And then of course, ball mount storage is also going to be great with this. Any sort of hitch mounted accessory is gonna work. My one complaint with this is that I can't choose to have both. I can't have a bike rack and a ball mount. I've gotta choose one or the other. And something you might compare it to is the Swagman X mount. That's gonna have two mounting positions, one up top for primarily a bike rack or something, and then on the bottom for a smaller ball mount. I will say it probably wouldn't work as well for a larger adjustable ball mount like this. And overall, the whole, whole system has a smaller weight capacity of 100 pounds compared to the 350 we're getting here. So it's really up to the accessories you wanna mount up, how sturdy you want it to be, and what options you need with those mounting systems. And as far as install goes, it actually comes with all the hardware you need, which is great. It simplifies the whole process and it's super easy to get it installed. Let's check it out. Starting off, you wanna locate a wooden stud on your wall. This is capable of holding a large amount of weight, so we wanna make sure that it's properly supported. I'm just going to pick this spot on the wall here. You also kinda of wanna think about the height you're gonna be setting it at. So for us right here, I'm just gonna mark the top hole right there. And then I'm gonna get my level out, make sure everything is level, and just kind of pivot it at the bottom. Once I have it where I want it, I can mark my bottom hole as well. And then we can drill out those two markings. I'll be using an eighth inch drill bit to drill out these holes. Once you have those pilot holes drilled out, we can use a 14 millimeter socket to install our provided hardware with the provided washer on there for the top and bottom. When you're setting this up, the longer, thicker portion will be at the bottom and that sticker will be on top. 
I'm gonna leave that somewhat loose right now until I get that bottom one in. And once both of those are fully secured, we can put in our accessory and we're good to go. And that'll do it for our look at the Kurt wall mount for your hitch mounted accessories. For me, this is probably the way I would go in my own garage. I think it's built really tough. I can mount it wherever I need. It comes with the hardware I need and it's gonna get me that space to throw something underneath like a toolbox or a workbench. Thanks for watching.